What are the best defensive abilities and superpowers in this game? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Mid Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. And I realised earlier this week that it had been such a long time since I'd done a sort of original piece of MCP content by myself that wasn't reviewing something, wasn't the weekly bugle with one of the guys, uh, wasn't a tier list, wasn't an ultimate guide. And I thought, right, I want to put a video together uh, by myself. And I was thinking of ideas. And then I played a game the other week and I had some bad feels. I had some bad feels. I was making attacks into people. I didn't feel like I was getting the results I should have gotten. We all know this is a dice game. And then I went and started looking at the maths behind the dice, the sort of damage I should be doing. And I realized that actually, yeah, that, that you can't get damage through on a Captain America or on his injured side when he's got cover and he's having his dice boosted by himself and a Doctor Strange and whoever else. Um, so I thought that was a very interesting topic to understand what the different types of um, defensive technologies there are in this game. And then having a look at which ones are the most effective, pitting them off against each other. Um, and yeah, so what I've done is I've broken them down into different categories. Um, so we've got things like um, uh, attack redirections. So, you know, moving a attack from one character to another. We've got things like attack evasion. Um, we're then going to take a look at baseline attack. Attack. So then we're going to put some numbers behind this. Things that can affect your defense dice pool, things that can affect your opponent's attack dice pool, uh, plus then just straight up damage mitigation. Uh, let's, so let's jump straight in and first of all take a look at some different types of attack redirection. Okay, so attack redirection. Let's start off then with kind of the first one that we saw in the game, which of course is Bodyguard. Uh, bodyguard, uh, two great examples of that, a great four threat and a great two threat, uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers and Okoye. Um, so what is a bodyguard? Well, a bodyguard is essentially um, when another allied character within range two typically is targeted by an attack, another character can spend um, power, in this case on both Cap and Okoye, it's two power, uh, and then they become the target of the attack, um, irrespective of the range or indeed line of sight. So it doesn't stop your opponent from ever being able to make an attack. Um, it's got some other different names as well, and this is really one of the reasons why um, I really think that we should have standardized names of things in this game. Um, but you've also got, uh, I think it's Gamma Transformation, uh, no, sorry, legal defense as even uh, legal defense on She Hulk. We should have standardized names for these things. Um, but yeah, this this basically takes an attack from one character and it's the target, and then another character pays that power. Um, there's also a tactics card that allows us to do this as well, which is sacrifice. Uh, slightly different in that um, both characters pay one power each. However, um, you have to be aware of sacrifice that you cannot modify and you cannot add any additional uh, defense dice. So Steve, for example, can't add defense dice. Somebody else can add it in, uh, but the, the actual targeted character can't add any defense dice in there. Next up then, we have got taunts. Now again, these are generic terms that I'm going to use. Um, we've got two examples here, Luke Cage and Honey Badger. Um, they have something called Too Dangerous to Ignore. And it works a little bit like Bodyguard. You may hear it be, you may hear it be called Reverse Bodyguard. The difference here is, is that um, when an enemy character within a certain range target another character so the key here is that on bodyguard um the character that's going to take the hit eventually has to be in range of the target um in this example with taunt or reverse bodyguard you've got to be in range of the person that is doing the attack so too dangerous to ignore on luke and then on honey badger and then once again just to throw something in the mix and um, scourge has got right hand man um but again they all do the same type of thing we then have a couple of examples of tactics cards that do a very, very similar thing as well. Uh, one of the first ones we saw in the game, Lethal Protector on Venom. 
Now, obviously the opportunity cost here is a little bit more expensive, but as we can see, we've gone from a range two up to a range three. It's going to cost two power, um, but you do get to place Venom within one uh, of the allied character. Um, so a little bit different. Um, there's a couple of other examples as well. You've got Heroes for Hire, where the targeted character pays the power, but then Luke or Iron Fist perform the action. There's also a really weird one where, um, on this one where they can actually pay for it themselves. And actually on all of these, they can pay for this themselves to be able to, to bounce themselves around. This has a throw at the back end of it, size three or more, um, as long as the target character uh, either Luke or Iron Fist wasn't dazed. They get a short throw it away. And lastly, we've got Comrade's Keeper. Again, works in a very, very similar way. They essentially taunt the attack off. Um, this one is a unrestricted throw away, which is which is pretty crazy. However, Red Guardian does need to take damage for that to take place. Um, Hail Hydra, uh, first seen on Red Skull, and I think up until very recently, the only character in the game that could pay to just go, you take this for me. Um, you may have seen recently as well on Modoc Scientist Supreme, he has genius requires sacrifice, your sacrifice to be precise. But the key thing here is that you throw it, you throw an attack into one of these characters and they can choose to offload it to another character really really useful uh when you've got characters like a taskmaster or something like that or somebody else who can just you know take a take a bit of a punch and once again the key thing with most of these is that it is regardless of range and indeed line of sight um which of these is the best they all kind of do the same thing for me bodyguard and hail hydra are a little bit better purely because you control um, your own characters. Now, don't get me wrong, you can displace characters. You know, a big thing with uh, Steve Rogers, for example, if you want to do an attack into somebody else and Steve's within two, you might do something to Steve beforehand and push him away or throw him away, so then you can do your actual attack. Um, but, you know, Hail Hydra and, and Bodyguard do, for me, are just ever so slightly better uh, than the Taunts. However... The tactics cards are really, really good. Um, but, you know, they, they, they all do a very, very similar job. By the way, we're not going to rank these first ones because it's very difficult to put numbers against them. The attacks are still going through, but typically the characters that are going to take the attacks on behalf of another character are going to have some of the defensive tech that we're going to talk about. I just wanted to run through them as part of it. Next up then we've got attack evasion and this first one isn't really attack evasion it does stop certain types of attacks coming through but we've got stealth um, basically these characters cannot be targeted unless they are within range three um, of um, of the actual character that's making the attack and this does extend out to things like beam attacks it also extends out to things uh, like ricochet from uh, Taskmaster or Captain America's or even Red Guardian Shield. Um, so, you know, quite useful. But once again, you often see that characters with stealth, we've got Martial Artist on Black Widow, Spider Man's got Spider Sense, Black Cat's got Bad Luck. They're usually doubled up with something else as well. Then let's move on to stealth ish. Now, why am I calling it stealth ish? Well, if we take a look at Cassandra Nova here, she has got Telepathic Cloak. Characters must be within range 3 of this character to target it with attack. It is the exact same ability as we saw with those other stealth. However, it doesn't have the keyword stealth. We can see the exact same example on Storm here with Goddess of Storms. Now, the reason I want to point these out and the reason why I think these stealth-ish type are just that little bit better than other character, other than other characters with, with just stealth is because of this card, Mark for Death becoming a very popular card um so whilst this will target the likes of black widow it'll target um you know gamora and all the other characters with stealth it won't target characters like cassandra nova like storm or any of the other ones that have got the same ability as stealth um but it's just named something different because it's named something different um again it's one of the reasons why i think keywords should have been implemented in this game because they could have had a name for the ability and then in the actual text they could have had this character gains stealth and it would have applied to everything but hey ho there we go it is what it is 
Next up, let's talk about Trickster. Um, originally seen on the God of Mischief himself, Loki. Um, essentially, when this character is targeted by an attack, he may use this superpower. Um, he can make a short advance uh, in any direction. Now, this is um, a little bit different because if Loki then ends his short advance and he is outside of range of the attack or outside of line of sight of the attack, as long as the attack didn't target multiple characters, so typically that's going to be with a beam attack um, or even an area attack as well, um, the opponent does get an action back. Uh, but it does mean, for example, that if you're coming up against um, somebody who's going to be doing a charge or something like that, um, it, it does sort of negate any, not a charge, sorry, like a ferocity or malachith or something like that. He's going to be able to attack you, but he's not going to get all of those benefits from the things that are built into that superpower that he used. He's also spent the, 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 the actual cost of the superpower as well. However, if this is just a spender that's been done into them, um, this would happen before your opponent pays uh, the actual power cost. So they wouldn't actually lose any power or anything like that. Um, Quicksilver has exactly the same ability there, reactive ability, uh, catch me. And then I wanted to throw in here as well, Ghost Spider. Um, the reason why is um, it's almost exactly the same text. The difference here is that Ghost Spider is going to be able to push the target, I hate that terminology, push the target towards Gwen um, or Ghost Spider. Um, but once again, if they end up being out of line of sight or out of range of the attack, the attacking character is going to get their action back. Next up then is uh, Tricks and Traps again. Um, first seen, or maybe first seen, I think, on Mysterio. Uh, we've also got, uh, I think it's called, yeah, Psychic Distraction on Cassandra Nova. Now, the reason that this works really, really well uh, is A, because of Stealth on Mysterio, B, because of that telepathic cloak on Cassandra Nova. But essentially, somebody has to be within range 3 to attack either of these two characters. When, when a, an enemy character ends their movement within range 3, now, movement can be absolutely anything. It can be a push, it can be a throw, it can be a move action, it can be a charge, it can be a place. Anything in this game where a character ends up being at a different part of the board um, is classed as a movement in this game. So really, really important. Um, they get to roll four dice. Um, if um, for, for every wild and every crit that they roll, it does a damage, which is quite nice. But um, they do get to make a short advance off the back end of it. So the idea is, is that you move up to within range three. Cassandra Nova, for example, rolls some dice, does one damage, and then gets to move short away. So you are still outside of that range three to be able to do an attack. Um, really, really nice defensive tech, especially when you look at some of the stat lines um, in the defenses for these characters. So look at a couple of other movement type shenanigans that work that uh, I would consider to be defensive tech. Um, first of all, we've got uh, Nick Fury with his eye in the sky. Uh, the targeted character makes a short advance. If at the end of the advance, the character is outside the attacker's uh, range or line of sight, blah, 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 they get it back. Difference here is Nick Fury pays the power. There's no range on this, so Nick can be sat at the back of the board. This can be a character that's way, way up the board. And if you're in shield, then basically you get to recycle this card and it gets to be played every single turn, which is really, really nice. And then lastly for the other movement, is going to be Spider Tracker. Works slightly differently. It's kind of the front end of Tricks and Traps. Uh, but when an enemy character ends a move action within range 4 of a allied Web Warriors character. So it is just Web Warriors. Um, spend 2 power and then that character may advance. However, there is no kicker on this. They do not get their... Um, they do not get their action back. So this is the one thing that I used to go up against Malekith all the time with. Um, against Web Warriors. It makes Web, web Warriors... Or when Malekith was the beast he was, very, very good because he does a ferocity and he doesn't get anything back from it. So he spent that power really, really good against any sort of charges or anything like that because not only do they not get to then make the attack, um, they lose the power for the superpower and because typically charges, with the exception of Ulic, is a once per turn, um, they can't do it again. So they're usually outside of range. And then lastly, I wanted to just give a little shout out to our boy uh, Mortimer Tybee here, aka Toad, uh, with Slippery. 
doesn't stop the first attack, but it's a little bit of defensive tech that allows him to make a medium advance um, and basically get out of range for that second attack. And then again, there is a tactics card that does a similar thing in fallback. Uh, this is also before damage is dealt, which is quite nice um, because you can actually move away and if you are holding an objective or something like that, you're holding a, a, a token, um, you can move short away from the character and it may be then that um, they don't have any actions left to be able to move and pick it up or indeed they have to move and pick it up and they're coming closer towards where you are. Um, the last thing that I want to just talk about and go through uh, is changing your defensive type. Again, we're not going to put any stats in here for this and we're not going to rank them with the rest. Um, but we've got two examples here in Enchantress and Cassandra Nova. So this first type is, let's say that Mysterio is targeted with a physical attack. Your opponent has to spend two power to be able to stop him using his mystic attacks. I think every example that we've got in the game so far is um, you get to revert to your mystic attacks. Um, it's quite nice. It's a... a power attacks on your opponent there's also some crazy shenanigans as well uh, whereby if you have let's say uh, red skull or even using sacrifice or something like that um if your opponent targets let's use red skull the red skull as the example he targets red skull and then you choose to offload that attack attack into mysterio and let's say it was a physical attack the window of opportunity to actually spend the power has gone so your Mysterio is always going to get to roll those five Mystic uh, Defense dice, even if it's a physical attack coming in. Um, the last one and the last type works in a very, very similar way in terms of the end result, but how you get there, slightly different. This is uh, Magneto and it is uh, Force Projection. Um, it's still going to cost two power like the other ones are. And it basically allows Magneto, irrespective of the type of attack coming in, use that six Mystic Defense rather than his three energy or three physical. Um, but it also means that he can't be thrown at the back end of this attack, actually pushed or thrown even. So he's got an extra little bit in there. Um, which is better? Again, it depends. Um, one of them is attacks on your opponent uh, for their power, but they can choose to get around it. Um, however, with Magneto... Is a really you know typically you want to always try and keep two power on Magneto at all times so you can choose whether you want to do it or not. Okay, guys, so that's an overview of the very different types of defensive tech that we've got out there um, that we're not going to be ranking as part of this. I just wanted to make sure we included them um, just so I could give you my thoughts on each of them. Um, but what we are going to do now is run through what our baseline attack is going to be. So why do we need a baseline attack? Well, basically, we're going to compare all sorts of different things like gaining cover, doing a reroll, which is better, hex or shock. Um, and to do that, we need a baseline attack to base it on. So our baseline attack is basically going to be a six strength. We're ignoring what type of attack it is. The attack type is irrelevant for this, but a six strength attack with a single reroll. Um, you know, a spender with a, with a reroll or something like that, whatever it may be, but that's just going to be our baseline attack. And then our baseline defense is going to be three defense dice. And typically you would expect uh, average damage to be dealt with this attack is going to be 2.65 damage. So we know that that is our baseline. So now what we're going to do is take a look at the different types of defensive tech that happen within the role itself um, or, or sometimes at the back end of the role as well uh, and we're going to take a look and see which one of these are the best which ones you should be prioritizing and maybe why some of those feel bad dice you maybe shouldn't feel quite as bad about so starting off then we're going to look at things that can affect your own defense pool this can be additional dice dice modification those sorts of things so let's start off with something that every single character in the game can benefit from and it is of course cover uh, why do i say that well any single character in the game uh, can gain 
cover from Terrain. If you want to watch a more detailed video, I'll put it at the very end, or there might be a link here somewhere um, that goes through exactly how cover works and all the varying kinds of cover, because uh, not all cover is created equal. Um, but you can also gain cover from other ways as well. So Rocket Raccoon, for example, has that small stature. You've got a tactics card that can give you it like magnetic refraction. Um, and then lastly, you've got things... Um, or you've got crisis cards in the game like superpowered scoundrels. Um, so again, remember that baseline that we talked about. 2.65 is our baseline damage. If we've got cover with those three defense dice, we're actually going to be mitigating, on average, nearly 31% of the damage that comes through. So our average expected damage drops from 265 down to 1.83 so that's a pretty good return on investment for just being stood in the right place at the right time and testament as to how important um, positioning is in this game let's take a look at something else that's very very common not everybody has access to it but there's a certain guy you can put on the field that makes sure everyone has access to it uh, baron zima obviously dishing out those rerolls for anyone that's in range two um you can get rerolls just on your stat card you know in humans that's one of their things they get to reroll uh, one attack and in this case one defense die um we can also have other characters uh, like Sentinel Prime who can spend X um, and typically it's up to three um, but then for each power spent they can re-roll one die or they can allow other people to re-roll dies in their defense pool as well and then lastly you've got characters like the Hulk who can just re-roll every single die that they want um, but any of them and that's the important thing they can choose which of those dice they want to uh, they want to do so let's have a quick look then so if we have access to one reroll we can expect uh, an average 2.34 damage to come through so that's uh, almost a 12 percent reduction if you've got access to two rerolls, it's going to be 2.15 damage almost a 19 percent reduction there three and it's going to give us almost or just over a 21 percent damage reduction going down to 2.09 and then finally if we can re-roll any of our dice so any and all really important to distinguish between the two re-rolling all dice isn't going to change the average because you just get the average re-rolling any dice um including being able to re-roll failures really importantly uh because you can ignore your successes and then re-roll the ones that are not successes huge jump up 1.76 which is 33.58 damage reduction there the common one is adding additional dice typically this is done in one of two ways and what we're talking about here is adding two dice i did forget to put four in i apologize in advance uh, if i remember i'll maybe put it in the comments below um ways that characters can add dice first of all they can add it to their own dice pool like captain america sam wilson with that vibranium shield or if you've got the best doctor in the game uh dr strange stephen vincent strange he can add two die to the target's defense roll and um, apologies like i say i didn't add the two together so this one is just based on two i didn't do four but we can see here that we can expect to um when we're going from three dice up to five, it goes to a 1.96 damage through. So just over 26% damage reduction. So pretty good. And the reason why dice are so good is there's always that probability that you're going to get a crit, which essentially takes you from a three dice pull to a five dice pull, but then potential of being able to add in more dice because you've got that one in eight chance on every dice of adding in a crit as well. Next up, counting blanks. A couple of examples here of how we can do that. So you've got Red Guardian, where it's a reactive ability and he can spend power to do it. You've got characters like Iron Fist. And for this one, he's got Master Martial Artist, so it's range two, but other characters like Black Widow, uh, where it's just range one. Uh, sorry, it's, he's range three. Normally, it's range two. And then you've got Captain America on his injured side, who just always adds blanks to his successes. Key thing about counting blanks, um, when you add blanks to your successes, you're not actually modifying dice. So it does get around some of those sneak little things that are out there, like the Agent Venom and Venom who can stop you from being able to modify your dice. It also ignores things like Pierce, because guess what? If you turn one of my successes into a blank, 
Well, I'm actually counting blanks as well, so it's pretty darn good. Um, drops down the expected damage uh, from that 2.65. Again, remembering it's only three dice, down to 1.91. It's almost a 28% uh, damage reduction overall. Next up, counting failures, we've got the Scarlet Witch with the Chosen of Cthorne. It's the same thing, really, when we're counting failures, um, we're, we're not bothered about the dice modification side of things because that's that doesn't affect us here. Um, less failures than there are blanks. There's two blanks on a die and there's only one failure. So not quite as good. Uh, average expected damage is 2.27 and it is just over a 14% damage reduction. Let's talk about some other funky little things now in what we're going to call probability manipulation. This is obviously coming from Domino. Um, this did have a slight change. You used to be able to pay for um, failures in advance, but essentially uh, before you explode your crits uh, for any failures that you have in your role, and these calculations, by the way, are going to assume you have the power available to be able to explode those, crit, uh, those failures, you get to treat those failures as crits, therefore they count as successes, but they also can be um, can be exploded as well for potential additional ones. Once you count them as crits, they can be uh, rerolled. So you'll see um, in later on in the, in the thing if you force your opponent to do rerolls and that sort of thing, they do get counted. Uh, and then even if they roll back into a skull, you don't get to count them again because it's not the same one. It's a little bit crazy. But overall, it's going to allow 2.13 damage to come through from that six dice, one reroll attack. Um, and it's going to mitigate it just under 20%. So it's still pretty good. Staying on the theme of creating extra crits out of nowhere, it is, of course, the reality gem. Um, so when rolling dice as part of an attack, defense, dodge, or interact roll, this character treats one crit sorry one failure as a crit result so if it comes up initially before the crit phase you get to add it in obviously exclusive to only two characters in the game Corvus Glaive being the first one that it came with and then Thanos the Mad Titan these numbers by the way are if any character had the reality gem I will give you an example later on of how combining the reality gem plus some of the other things that we've got um, can sort of stack that damage mitigation up um, but it's going to allow an average of two point um, 3 3 damage through, giving a damage reduction of around about 12% overall. Double wilds next, and we tend to see these just on the uh, the robots. So we've got Ultron um, with his all will be metal. Um, once again, it usually is mystic, but I haven't said that it's just mystic purely because of the fact that, well, they may be in the future that it isn't. We also see them on Sentinel Mark IV and the Sentinel Prime Mark IV with that Sentinel programming. Essentially, for every wild that you roll in your defense roll, you get to count it as two successes. Hence the name, Double Wilds. Average expected damage, 2.12, a 20% damage reduction overall. We've been talking a lot about damage reduction overall, so let's get into the damage reduction stage. So these are superpowers that do just that. They reduce the amount of damage that you are taking. Typically, these happen at the very end of the uh, dice roll once everything else has been worked out. But let's start with talking about the first one that we saw in the game, which is I'm calling Invulnerable. Um, it was first seen on the Invincible Iron Man. Once again, this is where I really, really think we need keywords. Um, but essentially, when this character would suffer damage, reduce the amount suffered by one to a minimum of one. There's a couple of different flavors of this. Um, so you've got Trollhide on Ulic. It's a different name. It does exactly the same thing. And then lastly, you've got Invulnerability on Proxima Midnight, where when this character would suffer damage from an enemy effect, reduce the amount suffered by one to a minimum of one. Um, why is that important? Well, other things in the game can do damage or could do damage to either Iron Man or Ulic, um, and they can reduce everything by one to a minimum of one. Proxima Midnight can only deal with enemy effects. Um, because of that minimum for one, 
I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but it's an important, important distinction to make for future proofing of the game. Bearing in mind, we are only rerolling, or we are only rolling those three dice against those six incoming damage with one reroll. 2.65 average damage overall. If you've got invulnerable, you're going to be reducing that to 1.93. It's crazy, I know. You'd think that it would just go from 2.65 to 1.65, but that's not how dice and math work. But it is an overall damage reduction of 27% which is pretty darn good. Demonic Resilience up next. I did want to point this one out. Um, there's only one character in the game that's got it. Um, it is exactly the same as what we're calling Invulnerable, but this time he's going to be able to reduce it by two to a minimum of one. So an average expected damage of 1.43 and a 46.79% damage reduction. It's pretty darn good. Next up is Inured. Uh, Inured of Pain, first seen in Crossbones, or on Crossbones, should I say. This works slightly different to Invulnerable. Why? Well, first of all, it's typically a reactive power. You have to spend... Uh, super you have to spend power... Sorry, it's a reactive superpower, so you have to spend power for most of them. Um, but you can reduce it to a minimum of zero. Um, and in some cases, like with crossbones, um, you can actually use this for any sort of damage. So if you're holding a cube, you can pay power. If you've got bleed, you can pay power. So really, really cool. Next up, we have got Hulkbuster. For me, this is the worst version of this one. The reason why is you have to pay for this when you are targeted. Um, so you actually don't know if you're going to take any damage or not. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a little bit different. It's got the the push at the result the at the back end of it, which is maybe why um so you can't be pushed, but less of a fan of this one. Maybe if it was on a slightly different character, it would work well. And then lastly you've got Thanos the Mad Titan uh, where he is the being of immeasurable power. Um, he gets to reduce anything down to zero. So he gets to reduce enemy damage down to zero, not anything, but it is an innate ability, so he doesn't have to pay for it. This is going to reduce the average damage down to 1.78 damage per attack. So that's almost a 33% uh, damage reduction. There are obviously some other different types of damage reduction. Now, we're not going to include these in our overall scores because they're one-offs, they're one-hits, uh, typically coming in the form of tactics cards or a single ability on a character. But we've got exceptional healing. Obviously, spend three power, reduce all the damage suffered to one. Really, really good against a particularly big hit, something like that, or where you want to keep your X-23 alive so she can do something. Odin's Blessing, exactly the same thing, but this time exclusively uh, for the use of Asgardians. And then we do have Supergiant. She's got a similar thing um, with Ethereal. Uh, this purely works against physical attacks, which is why I didn't give her her own thing. But ultimately, all of these reduce the damage uh, down to one. Next up, we've got Attack modification so this is where you are either stopping your opponent from doing something that they would normally have access to or actually messing around with their dice and playing with their dice as well so first up to mitigate that really powerful reroll that we've got coming in is characters that can just stop it so first of all we've got black cat with her bad luck uh, characters cannot modify uh, attack dice when targeting this character with attacks uh, Rerolls are dice modification. Anything you do with your dice that essentially changes the face of them is dice modification. Angela has a very, very similar thing with her living ribbons. And then lastly, we've got Medusa with her living strands. Um, again, I wish we would standardize some keywords here because all you would have to do is then put the name of it and then underneath this character gains this. Um, now, a little bit different with this one. Obviously, We've got our six dice attack coming in with one reroll. This is one of the reasons why we put a single reroll in there. And you can see that it's going to drop that from the 2.65 down to 2.2, so almost a 17% reduction in damage. However, I just thought it would be interesting to take a look at if it was the same size attack, six, uh, with not just one reroll, but two and then three. So we can see here that if the character has access to two rerolls, it's a 27% reduction in damage. And then if they have access to three rerolls, it's a 
percent reduction reroll and attack die this has been super powerful for me whilst i've been playing a lot of winter guard um in particular with crimson dynamo amazing spider-man with his witty banter um can force your opponent to reroll one die in their attack roll and then obviously crimson dynamo with that disruption field um as long as they're within range three for both of them um they can he can force them to reroll two uh, can see the results here. Rerolling one, 16.6% reduction in average damage output. And if you get to reroll two of them, it's going to be a 27.55 uh, reduction in damage. Once again, on average. Reverse Pierce next. The bane of my life. Uh, absolutely hit this ability. Star Lord did so many attacks into Doctor Strange and he rolled about three or four wilds which just negated any damage that came through first of all we've got damvers that can do it essentially the way that this works uh, every wild you roll in your defense pool you get to turn one of your opponent's successes to a blank um damvers also gets power um for each one that she does in this way and as i mentioned dr strange sorcerer supreme can do it as well average damage to go through 2.33 so an overall reduction of just over 12%. Um, feels a lot more powerful to me whenever I come up against it, but hey ho, there we go. Next up, ignoring wild scene on Murdoch. Just to clarify, it's not ignoring wilds, it's turning wilds into a blank result. So if you do have a character that counts blanks, it's not going to work too much against them. It's important to note the timing on this. Um, go and look at a timing video that I did. Again, I'll leave a link here back over to it um there's a there's an order in which things happen essentially the attacking character modifies their dice then you modify your dice then the attacking character modifies your dice and then you modify their dice so what does that mean what well, it means for this peer still works applying conditions at least from wilds doesn't black swarm ha has pretty much the same identical thing with midnight field but it's going to cost her power uh to be able to do that but guys it's pretty damn powerful um average expected damage from that six dice attack with the reroll is going to be 1.8 over 32 percent damage reduction plus you've got to remember off the back end of it not getting any of those conditions that can be put out and talking about special conditions, and that was a nice little segue, wasn't it? I've picked two out. There's obviously one other one, which is Stagger, uh, but that's just going to stop them being able to, you know, make an action, uh, which could have been attacked, but it's not going to actually do anything within the attack itself. So we're not going to rank that one. First up, we've got Hex. What does Hex do? Well, it essentially turns off the ability for your opponent to explode their crits. So if they're rolling six dice, they can never ever have any more than six dice in there, unless they add some in from somewhere else. Um, but if they roll any crits, they're not going to be exploding them. And then Shock is essentially going to just reduce the number of dice that they roll by one. Super, super powerful, especially on characters that have only got a low, um, a low dice pool already, especially like a Winter Soldier, where they've got a trigger on there that they're trying to find to do that second attack. So let's first of all take a look at Hex. It's going to reduce that average damage expected down to 2.27. That's a 14.34% reduction. However, pipping it out is shock. Average expected damage is 2.11. That's just over a 20% reduction. Okay, guys, so that is all of the different uh, defensive tech that I can that I can think of, guys. There's probably more. I've probably missed some. I don't have every iteration of everything in there, but it gives you a general idea and overview in terms of what's going to give you the best bang for your buck. What I thought would be really interesting is to take a look at the... I think it's like 18 or 19 different things in there that we've taken a look at. Uh, and just, you know, some that may help you. So let's take a quick look at this then. This is the tart, uh, chart even, not tart, of everything. And um, maybe we shouldn't include demonic resilience in there purely because of the fact that, well, it doesn't kind of feel very fair that it is in there. But that is leading the way with 46.79% reduction. A single reroll, while still being good, is only going to give you just under 12. Then you've got Reverse Pierce, Reality Gem, Hex, Counting Failures, Reroll 1 Attack Die, Stopping Rerolls, um, Reroll 2, Probability Manipulation, Double Wilds, um, Reroll Any being the most powerful outside Demonic Resilience, um, Inured, as you would probably expect, being very, very good there as well. One that really stood out for me, guys, when doing this was how good 
cover is. Cover is the what? One, two, three, four, the fifth. One, two, three, four, fifth. Fifth best defensive tech in the game. And it's something that absolutely everybody uh, can have access to. So really when you're thinking about your crisis selection, when you're thinking about placement of characters, really, really important to think about that. And also characters that can ignore cover as well. So your shield throwers, your taskmaster, your Captain America's, Red Guardian, um, also characters like Venom who can stop them because uh, once again cover is a modification of dice so worthwhile thinking about that as well. Um, so yeah there's the chart guys um, and again another one that stood out for me was Shock versus Hex depending on what it is you want to do. Obviously Hex does a lot more, it counts for any dice that you're rolling where you would explode them in dodges and in uh, attack rolls and defense rolls as well but if you purely want to stop the damage output of a character, Shock is significantly better by you know nearly what five percent ten sorry five six percent um than what hex is so maybe that's a little bit of information that you may find useful um the next thing i wanted to just finish the video off with was talking about stacking these up so combining different defensive tech <clears throat> and i want to give you a couple of examples to show you how layering these on top of each other can make characters very very tanky even if they weren't to start out with in the first place um but also maybe answer some of those questions as to why you've been getting some feel bads um when when rolling dice into certain characters so first up let's take a look at uh, thanos with the reality gem sitting under the guardians of the galaxy well we are talking again about that standard six dice attack with one reroll. We obviously know that being a being of immeasurable power, Thanos can reduce that damage uh, by one. Uh, this is going to be a physical attack coming in. So his three defense dice is going to um, typically allow 1.78 damage to come in. That's those six dice with a reroll. However, let's add that infinity gem in there. Um, yes, it's restricted, but it's seen quite a lot on Thanos. That's going to reduce the damage down to 1.42 however he sat under the guardians of the galaxy star lord's giving him a wing in it token meaning that he gets to re-roll two of those uh two of those defense dice meaning that on average he's taking less than a damage almost four well just over 47 percent damage reduction but it's the fact that it is less on average less than a single damage so if you're wondering why on earth thanos is particularly difficult to defeat in Guardians of the Galaxy, this is the reason why. Next up, I want to give another example. This is what I've just called the Winter Guard crew. Um, people, when I've been playing Winter Guard, have said, oh my word, Red Guardian is just so tanky. Now, he's not tanky, right? Without using, without spending any power, he has three defense dice. That's all he's got. So we know that that's going to be 2.65 damage coming in on average he however does have the ability to count blanks so if we count them blanks by spending the two power we're going to drop that expected damage down to 1.91 but being in the winter guard red guardian's got a little buddy around him crimson dynamo that can also pay using that disruption field to reroll two of your opponent's dice dropping that expected damage down to 1.21 almost a 54% damage reduction by spending four power, which on a character like Red Guardian is going to be well worth it. Lastly, we have got the king, the king of taking damage. He can do this all day. It is, of course, Captain America, Steve Rogers. Now with that four defense dice, and I can do this all day, that six dice coming in and the, the single reroll with it is already only doing 1.4 damage which is absolutely crazy but let's say steve's got some pretty good positioning so he's stood behind a piece of hydro terrain for example um or at least to the side line of sight still there um so just by having cover from the terrain he's going to drop that damage from 1.4 down to 0.9 and then he's going to spend money on that vibranium shield adding two dice to his defense roll Taking it down, guys, to 0.35 damage from a six dice attack with a reroll, a 75% damage reduction, which is just absolutely crazy. Um, 
there is a reason why he can do this all day. And there is a reason why once he gets onto his injured side, throwing stuff at him and attacking him with mystic attacks is definitely the way to take him down. There we go, guys. That was a fun little video that we put together. Hopefully you really enjoyed it. Um, let me know down in the comment section below if there's any defensive tech that I've missed. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Cerebro MCP. There'll be a link down in the description below. I use their dice calculator to calculate all of these different um, dice results. Um, go and check them out. Go support them. They're also great for building rosters, whether you're playing online on TTS, you can import them directly in there. You've probably seen me do that before in videos. Or even if you're playing uh, somewhere else and it's going to be a real-life game and it's on long shanks, you can export it to long shanks and it brings everything through for you. So huge, huge shout-out to those guys. Guys, if you have liked the video, please do leave a like. It really, really does help. And if you want to support us even further, you can do so by heading over to Patreon. Again, there'll be a link down in the description below. Where from as little as a pound a month. Uh, you can help support the channel so we can continue making this content that I hope you guys like. Lastly, we do have our Discord. Um, over 800 people on there now. Uh, not just MCP, but all sorts of other games on there as well, from Shatterpoint through to Marvel Snap, plus some other things. So head on over there. It's completely free to join and just a, a fun place to be and hang out. And as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.